Courtney Ortiz. Welcome back to my camp, the podcast where we discuss everything camp and really search the United States for the best camps across the country and really feature and highlight the amazing things they're doing to empower youth um, across the country, not only in the summer, but as we'll learn today from our guest, Nick Coffing, the general manager of Canyon Creek Summer Camp. You know, when you run a Camp in uh, Southern California gives you a lot of opportunities to be able to run your programs year round. So I know you're doing a lot of amazing things. Welcome to my camp. You're joining me in my in the HC, and thank you, um, thank you for being here today. How are you? Good, good. No, thank you for having me. I, I appreciate. Great. So you know, Canyon Creek Summer Camp, as I was doing my research, is um, you know. It's basically a newish camp, right? Uh, I was born in 2001. So does that make it like a millennial on the camp yes. scene? So yeah, tell me no. a little bit about that story. I'm always intrigued by, um, especially newer camps. You know, we have camps on that are from 100 years old to, you know, still being in their early 20s. So give me some background. Yeah, no, uh, we're definitely, um, we used to say that we were kind of babies in the camp world. Uh, you know, compared to, as you said, you know, a lot of camps started in the 50s or 60s or, you know, um, a while ago. Um, I guess now we're kind of in the the, the teens or so, maybe. Um, you know, we're still definitely, you know, newer. Um, and so, yeah, we started in 2001. Uh, we have uh, three owners. We have Jeff Robinson, Daryl Moss, and Natalie Moss. Um, and so uh, Jeff uh, has always wanted to, he grew up going to camp, always wanted to start his own camp. And um, he kind of got out of his family business and uh, was, you know, kind of in the right time of life to kind of take an adventure and start something new. And um, his kids had always played in sports leagues run by Daryl. And so Daryl's been in the day camp world and Parks and Rec for a really long time and was very respected in that world. And so um, Jeff always would kind of pull him aside after the games and say, hey, you know, I want to start a camp. You're the person I want to do it with. You know, and that kind of conversation went on for a couple of years. Um, and then, you know, one year in kind of late 99, um, the, it, the tone took a little a bit of a shift. And he said, look, you know, the you know, I'm kind of out of the family business and now I'm ready to go. And so, um, yeah, so they took about a year to find the site. And then we opened in 2001 and started with about 30 campers. Uh, we probably had, a, had about 150 or so for the whole summer. And then now um, we have over a thousand kids in a summer. You know, I have this like fantasy of, or, you know, this in my mind of these three guys, you know, they're hiking, looking for their, their, their perfect spot and they get to this peak and the clouds, you know, the clouds part and the light shines down and then he hears a voice build a camp right here. So, I mean, in my mind, that's how I'm going to like romanticize that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, in, in California, one of the things I've kind of learned as I'm, you know, getting to know camps across the country is that, you know, camp or even like summer, there is very regional, like a summer culture, right? What they do in California might be different than what, you know, the camp or summer culture is up north. So, is, is, you know, it's, um, you know, was there a need for like a more of a traditional sleepaway camp in California? What did kids, what do kids generally do in Cali for the summer? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the, there's a really strong contingency of summer camps in California. I would say um, it's certainly different um, as, you know, as, as you know, and, and probably a lot of your listeners know, it's, it's not East coast camp style. So kids aren't going for six to eight weeks and saying bye for the summer and having inner camp sports and, you know, and parent visiting days and all of that type of stuff. Um, it's not quite that. Um, and so, and it's interesting because we have, you know, being in Los Angeles and uh, that's kind of that area is, is where a lot of most of our campers come from. Uh, a lot of their parents are transplants from the East Coast. And so a right. lot of parents will say, you know, they, they really believe in camp. And, you know, but they were, you know, you grew up going six and seven, eight weeks long. Um, so our sessions are a little shorter. So it's not as quite as established um, in, in that sense. And so um, they, we have five sessions in a summer. 
session one and five are one week long and then two, three, and four are two weeks long. So two week is kind of our keystone main program. Um, however, we find out that a lot of East Coast transplant parents, their kids often come for a month. So we have a large number of campers who will come for two sessions or three sessions in the middle. Um, and a lot of those campers are, you know, they're, they're kids of parents that used to go for six, seven, eight weeks. So, you know, camp is at least four weeks for them. So, um, but having those breakdown of sessions, it really gives us the flexibility, um, you know, because there are also a lot of campers families who didn't grow up, you know, on, on the East Coast. So, so summer camp is like a one or two week long. So, um, you know, I would love to have like a, a six week long or eight week long program, but this kind of was kind of the best of both worlds for us to, to do it. But you know, what's so awesome about that is that you're able to, you know, I hate to use the word service, but you're able to provide an amazing summer activity for so many more kids. I mean, did you say you're, you're, you're have like over a thousand kids that are coming in and out of your camp for a summer? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have about, yeah. So we'll have about a thousand kids for the summer. Um, and you know, but we, our camp holds about 250 kids. So obviously, you know, the, the shorter sessions, the multiple sessions that allows us to, you know, to give camp to more kids. Correct. Oh, and, and so you really are be able to see the, you know, the a greater impact and benefit um, for those kids. So I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of value in that too. And for those parents who, like you said, didn't grow up on the East Coast or that wasn't part of their summer culture, you know, sending your kids away for two weeks can be very much out of their comfort zone. So, um, and then it's awesome that you do allow, you know, you do have opportunities for those kids that want to stay longer, you know, because they just can't get enough <laughs> of Canyon Creek summer camp. And I have to tell you, I am a sucker for a really great camp video. And as I was like reviewing kind of before we, I, you came on today, but I was, um, two things. The first, just the watch your video on your homepage, um, I, I had tears coming out of my eyes. I mean, the oh, things that you. you were saying, like as a as a parent um, of kids and who go to camp, I, it really like touched me. And you know, just even like, and I will quote, um, <laughs> you know, when you wake up at camp, you know, waking up at camp is different. You get to be me, and that's really the cornerstone of your camp. And even as an adult, you know, coming to camp and being able to, you know, wear your it really, it's it's um it's it's empowering and motivating and inspiring, and I can see that that that's your goal just from those few minutes on on your website. So you know, tell me a little bit more about those values and goals that you really instill into your campers in, during a session. No, I mean, for, thank you very much. We uh, uh, the, the very very kind words, um, and it's nice to know that the video you know the videos are having an impact, and and that that's one area where we have really, you know, found a good partnership with someone and, um, and, and really created some, some really cool pieces. Um, and so, you know, it really speaks to, um, you know, we kind of call it the Creeker way. Um, and so we built Canyon Creek on two words, which are family and respect. And so every camper that comes to, uh, through our gates, they, they know that from day one, um, that we call it the Creeker way and it's, and it's based off family and respect. Um, and so really, it kind of guides, that really guides us, you know, with everything we do. Um, and, you know, and it's, and it's a great kind of tool because, you know, as, as we tell campers, you know, sometimes families fight and sometimes they get along and it's a bumpy road at times. And so, so it really, um, you know, it's a really nice piece for our campers and our staff and even ourselves as admin to kind of embrace that, you know, the good with the bad. And, and, and we know that even though there's the bad, we all serve the kind of the same goal and the same purpose. And so, um, yeah, so those two words are really, it's, it's the cornerstone of what we built it on. So that children can feel safe, valued and loved. Right. And yeah. I think that's the cornerstone of like, just going away to camp, whether you're like admin counselor or a, um, or a camper is it really is a, a safe Base with your people that you, um, you know, you do love the most. It's a, it's a secondary family. So you're in the middle of a two week session. You're right in the middle. Everyone's in their groove. Take me through a typical day in the life at Canyon Creek for a Creeker. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, yeah, we call them the Creekers. So you're, you've done your research. I really, uh, it shows. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and so, you know, a day in the life, actually in a two week session, uh, the middle of the two week is actually a very different experience than a normal day. Um, so I can kind of talk a little bit about both because what we do in the weekend um, is one of our campers favorite things that we kind of switch up. So, you know, a typical week, you know, breakfast at eight, um, you have activities from nine to 1230, 1230 is lunch. We have, you know, rest hour and riding home and camp store and all that fun stuff in the afternoon. And then uh, in the afternoon from 2.30 to 5, we have a free choice. So we have um, 12 to 15 activities that campers can choose from, and they get to choose wherever they want to go. Um, so we really, you know, we really try to strive on teaching independence, um, you know, at camp. And so we find that in the morning time, they're with their cabins, you know, with their similar age groups. But in the afternoon, um, they really get to kind of make their day however they want to make their day. Um, and if they love the pool, then they get to go to the pool every afternoon. Or, you know, if they have a sibling at camp, you know, um, you know, sometimes the sibling, you know, they might get to go do something together in the afternoon. So it really kind of opens things up. Um, and it really allows our counselors to get to meet a lot of campers because uh, we're together a lot of the days we eat all our meals together, those type of things. So we we're a larger camp, but not so large where, you know, I know some camps have five, 600, they're just multiple meals. Or, you know, sometimes you might be at camp and not see the other person for the whole time you're there. Um, but right. we're lucky that it's a very intimate, you know, of intimate feeling. Um, so that's kind of the typical day. But then on a two week session in the middle weekend, we actually do a two day sports tournament. Um, like a, like a, like a color war kind, kind of, of a, yeah, kind, kind of a color war except. Um, so we split them up into 16 different teams. And so each team has um, about 10 ish campers, um, but it's like a mixture. So there's like a seven year old, an eight year old, a nine year old, a 10 year old, there's boys, there's girls. So it's a nice mixture of a, of a group. And then they get to create their own team name. They get, they make a cheer, they make their own flags. Mm. And so we do like a whole sports tournament. They play sports all day Saturday. Um, and then Sunday we have playoffs and championships and, and stuff. So um, it's really, it's really a great thing. Um, and if you ask the majority of our campers, that's, they kind of live for tournament um you know tournament but, that's that's what it's, it's called. Tournament. Tournament. It's tournament 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 it's so, so much, you would say it's that gotten pretty big. Go ahead. it's gotten pretty so big. that would be pre-tournament stretching in the morning there's a council that leads stretching on saturday morning they on fridays they do tournament practice so you can go to the basketball court and get some shots up and you know it's, it's become its own its own thing which has been great. I like I like that tournament. So you would say that my next question, like if there was one tradition that probably the campers look forward to the most as they come return would be would be tournament. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. Yeah, for for the two week session, which is kind of like our, you know, like our 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 exam, you know, program kind of basis. It, it's all created based off the two week model, um, even though okay. we do have one week, you know, in mixtures. But um, yeah, I would say that it is, it is the tournament. If you ask the majority. Would your one week session be more tailored for like the first time camper, someone who's a little yeah. new wanting to dip their, you know, dip their toe in before exactly. making that commitment. Yeah. So session one is geared towards first time campers. Um, so we don't do a tournament. They get to do pretty much everything else, uh, at camp. Really the tournament's the only thing that kind of delineates from, from a one week to two week. Um, and then session five is a one week as well. We try, we try to attend session one towards first time campers. Session five is first time campers. It's a little shorter, it, um, but being in LA, um, there's so many different schools and private schools and charter schools and, 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 and public schools. And there's a lot, um, I know, you know, in some other areas, it, it might be just the one, it, it's pretty simple to figure out when camp should end or when. And so for LA, there's, it seems like there's a new school starts on a different day in August every every day so um the session five is one week it's a lot geared towards just the schedules of, of parents and our campers and sometimes mm -hmm. they're so busy during the summer that that session five might be the only time they can kind of slot in before they go back to school um so it tends to be a little less first-time campers and more just it fits the schedule or we actually have a lot of campers who come during session two they love it and they want a little bit of taste of camp again before they go back to school. So I have a lot of campers who will come to like two and then go, you know, do sports and do other stuff. And then they'll come back at session five, you know, to have it 
kind of book in their summer? I mean, hashtag living the dream, right? Yeah, like bookend exactly. your summer with camp. I can't get yeah. it. Um, it can't get any better than that. Um, in terms of like food, we could talk about like camp food. Is there a specific like camp meal that everybody looks forward to? There's some traditional yes. camp food. There is. And uh, so we're very lucky. Um, we have some of the best camp food I would, I would put our camp food up against any camp in the country. I think that sounds like a, a, a new game show we should have, like we camp should. food challenge and then see should. which camp could bring I, I, And the, the reason I say that, well, number one, I'm a big believer and I obviously I, I love our kitchen staff and the work they do. Um, I did a conference, I did like a site tour with a bunch of different directors and operate, you know, they got to come visit different camps in California. So I had about 20 or so different camps and... I had 20 people that say that our camp food can't food out of the water. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying, but All I will right. say that, uh, we might have to hold you to that. Nick. So what, what is this, is that of this amazing culinary experience that you offer at Canyon Creek summer camp? What is that one meal that just. Yeah. So this is where I sound hypocritical because what I'm about to tell you doesn't, isn't like some culinary feat of, but off our campers, they would. I would say the majority of our campers would say Philly cheesesteaks. We do a Philly cheesesteak night, um, and you have ch you know chicken and steak and ch you know the whole deal. So, um, you know, I that's what that's what they would say. You know, maybe not my own favorite, but well, what's your favorite, Nick? Uh, I would say my favorite. See, this is where we're gonna go bougie. We do we do seared ahi tuna here. Oh, oh well, you're in California, you know. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Out so there. I'm really just kind of you know showing all my cards here. But uh, I would say that we we do a really good that, or we do like an Indian vegan type of thing. But Ooh. once again, I'm signing very LA, and I'm <laughs> I'm not really that person, but. Again, you know, it's all the difference in how, you know, regionally and nationally, how things are so different. So I was curious as, yeah. you know, going through your website and learning about your camp. And I have only been to California one time years ago, San Francisco. But if your camp had like that California feeling vibe as compared to um, other camps, but what is awesome about having your facility in Southern California is the fact that you're able to make it available to schools like all, all year round. So you're not only just impacting the kids that are walking through the gates during the summer, but you have school kids. Like you had a field trip there to this morning, I've, right? Yeah, like, I have a hundred and I have 136 seventh graders here right now. So yeah, so we um yeah, we're we're fortunate that we can uh being in being in Southern California, we can operate every day of the year. And so um obviously the pandemic that was a huge thing and you know where everyone's trying to claw their way back out of it um you know but even you know pre the uh, you know pre covid it would you know we were operating 200 plus days out of the year um wow. you know with with corporate groups or weddings or you know a, a lot of you know schools and and a lot you know we still primarily we serve youth you know through and through right. Um, but, um, you know, being that our site is only about an hour north of Los Angeles, so it just kind of opens the doors for, you know, some more opportunities that we're fortunate, you know, other than, you know, I know East Coast camps, they kind of have those three, four months, and then they kind of winterize things and everyone, you know, it's like every time right. I go to a, uh, a camp website, they have like their summer office and their winter office, but we don't have a winter office. <laughs> we're just, we're here all the time. So our summer office is our winter office. But. I live in the dream. I know I'm in South Florida and I look at pictures of my camp and it's, you know, covered in snow and snow, snow, snow. And I don't even own yeah. a coat. So, um, yeah. you know, I have no concept, but yeah. So again, like so many benefits and so many great things that you're doing, but um, now's the time on my camp podcast, when I asked you to do a little homework and bring a thing. So yes. now is the time when we're going to play bring that thing. So you cool. brought a thing that's meaningful. You Turks camp. And I would actually love for you to share with me three facts and I will attempt to uh, guess it, but I'm also want you to share something special about your camp. So tell me yeah. one special thing about your thing. So, um, 
it is something that's relatively new in the last like four-ish years, but it's taken a life of its own and it becomes something that we do every night, pretty much. <gasps> it's a I know what it is, I think, because yeah. I did my homework, but because I know, and I, I want you to share more. Give me another clue. Um, it's the campers love it. Our counselors love to hate it, but they hate that they love it because of how much their kids love it. Okay. Maybe I don't know. One more clue. <laughs> um, this thing has caused me to shave my head it's caused me to dye my entire head blonde and it's caused some people to swim in ponds and some other things would it be like tiktok challenges like challenges <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't my first guess it, but, is, um... it is not it is not all right so show me your thing what's your hey. thing it's this. <gasps> this oh. thing here. So uh, I'll make sure the logo is, is upright. So this thing is called Spin the Wheel. Um, it is an idea I had a number of years ago and decided to try it out at Campfire one night. And uh, it is, it's, its own, it's its own monster that I've somehow created. Um, so we are able to, we, so we do camp fire every single night. So I know I some thought, kids, you know what that when, when I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's what was going to be my first guess. Cause when you said you did it every night and from, yeah. and, and I wanted to say, I, I know you do the campfires every night yeah. and that is just big puffy heart love a campfire yeah. every night. So go ahead yeah, so, finish so, your story. Yeah. So I know some camps do an opening campfire or, you know, maybe one or two. So we do it every night. Um, and it's its own, like we have lights and music and it's 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 its own sort of snl show every single night um and skits and reoccurring skits and reoccurring characters and you know it's 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 probably my one of my favorite spots at camp and you know um and so it's been great i've actually had someone uh, an old friend of mine who was a counselor with me before i moved up they came and visited two summers ago or uh, in 2019 and they came to campfire and they were like, you've turned it into like a Vegas act. <laughs> he was like, back when we were counselors, it was like, there was no lights there. We came down, we did like two songs and that was pretty much it. And now it's like, a, it's, it's whole, it's a whole thing. So uh, at the end of every campfire, we do a thing called spin the wheel. So, you know, the music hits and everyone knows. And so we um, have all the cabins uh, like on ping pong balls. And so, you know, we'll draw a couple cabins a night. And so if we draw their cabin, then their counselors get to come down to the stage and they get to spin the wheel. And so they are trying, I don't know if you can see it. They're trying to land yeah. here, which is a, a private ice cream party for their cabin. Oh, all right. So that's, that's the ultimate thing. Um, if they land on, I don't know if you watched the show back in the eighties with like the no whammies. Uh, yeah. They, like those press your luck. Back in like the same right, right. So if they land on a whammy, that's 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 no good. There's four of them, and so the counselor um, gets. Well, it used to be they would get eggs cracked on them. That wasn't a sustainable. Um, so I that I thought this was only going to be like a a month long thing, and now we're going into I think year five of it this summer. So now it's uh, they get ice cold water, like bucket dropped on you know poured on them at the end um and then there's other games that they can there's uh let's make a deal there's the candy creek spelling bee so we'll give them a word to spell if they spell it right they get an ice cream party um there's vegas baby so they get to like roll a dice so there's chances to win the ice cream on different you know there's different games and different stuff um but after year one it was brought to my attention that our counselor said well nick why like should there be a chance for you to get whammied? So we created oh. the super whammy. 
So you have to go, I don't know if you can see it here, but you have to go in the middle here. So if you land on the super whammy, then it's a whole thing, which one year I dyed my hair completely blonde. Um, last summer I shaved my head completely, almost with a razor. Um, <laughs> and, you know, so there's always different things that, you know, but it's great for our counselors because our counselors know that, look, our head staff, like we're all in it together. And, right. and so um, all our head counselors, will, they'll decide in the beginning of the summer, okay, if you land on Super Whammy, this is what I'll do. So someone like, you know, someone swam across our pond and someone painted themselves blue for the day or someone like, there's all different types of things. So, um, so yeah, it's spin, it's spin the wheel and it's, that was a good one. Yeah, I just, but I did know this, the campfires every night and I really like, oh, that's, I love it. Campfires yeah. every night. So how long have you been with, camp, like, what's your camp story? Your time, you're talking like five years. Have you been to, with Canyon Creek since yeah. the beginning? Uh, no, not since the beginning. I just celebrate, uh, this summer will be my 17th summer. So you started as a camper. I did not. No, you did not. Wow. No. All right. So you're younger than you look. Or, yeah, or I, look, I, you I look appreciate younger. I look, I you appreciate look that. That's very nice. Um, right. You know, but no, I, I started uh, as a counselor uh, right after. So I went to Indiana University. Um, I'm from I'm born and raised uh, in Indiana. If there's any Indiana listeners, probably statistically, there's like only three, but you know, <laughs> they're out there. What up? Um, <laughs> And so I went to IU and at Indian University, they have a big summer camp job fair. And, yeah. um, and so I just went, uh, my, well, my roommate offered me, if I skip my class, he would buy my lunch. So really that's what I did. Uh, I, I grew up going to summer camp and then, um, you know, I was like, okay, well, I'll skip my class and you can buy me lunch. And, you know, he's like, well, I, I want to go to this summer camp job fair. Um, Cause he was a year older than me and he'd worked at a camp out in New York. So he wanted to go see his buddies <laughs> there. So he was talking to them. And so I figured, okay, well, I went to camp. And so I just kind of walked around and was kind of killing time and then uh, met someone from Canyon Creek. And so they, um, you know, recruited me to be a counselor and um, yeah, I interviewed and I came out that summer and, and a, and a small little story I tell all of our staff on, on the first day is um my first day at camp during, you know, for staff training after the day, I called home and I said, I wanted to go home because I didn't, they were really nice. Every, everyone was very nice. It just, I didn't know, it didn't click for me yet. It didn't feel like, and all these people were running around all the staff from years past were hugging each other. You know, they were just so excited to be back. And for me, it was like, everyone's nice. It's just not, you know, it's not clicking. And so, you know, I called my mom and I was like, you know, I think I want to go home. She's like, well, give it another couple of days. So on two on Wednesday, Tuesday night, we had decided they were going to, we were going to book my flight on Wednesday night for the end of the week. I was going to finish the staff training, tell them I was sorry <laughs> thank you for the opportunity, but I was going to, you know, it wasn't quite for me. And then, so we were going to book the flight on Wednesday night. Well, at Wednesday at lunch, and I, to this day, I don't remember what joke it was, but we were sitting with that staff. Someone told a joke. We were just crying, laughing. And I was looking around at people and I was like, you know what? I think it clicked. And I think I can do one summer. I was like, I'll do one summer. So I called home and I was like, look, don't book the flight. You know, I'll, I'll do it. It's, it, you know, it's, it, it finally clicked for me. And that was 17 years ago. Seven years so ago. The joke. Your poor started. unsuspecting freshman just I, getting I, a free lunch and they, they saw you and they're like, that kid. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I always that tell is... that story to staff because I tell them, you know, look, camp is a, it's, it's inherently a very inclusive place and in its design but sometimes we don't put the extra work in that we should as a staff and sometimes it can be very exclusive and and it wasn't anyone's fault it just wasn't clicking for me at the time so I always tell staff that hey you know for some of them it clicked the day that they got on the flight right. or the day that we told them that they were hired or some days that you know and I said some of you it might not click until Thursday or for you know and, it, right. and it's going to be a weird thing like I always tell them I, I don't remember the joke. I have no recollection. I just know it was a joke at lunch. And I just remember looking around at people. I don't remember all the details, but that was, that's, that's what, you know, that's what clicked for me. And so I always tell the staff every year, um, you know, and, and, it, and as you all know, I mean, as you know, it's, it's, 
it's different for everybody, you know, and everyone kind of experiences it and some right away and some not right away. And, you know, I have counselors, longtime counselors that hated camp growing up, right. you know, and, and now they're like coming on year four or five or they're on our admin team. So it's been a, it is interesting people's experiences and your story I feel is rings true just as much today as it did 17 years ago. And, um, you know, I've seen it change lives, you know, being a camp counselor, we talk so much about like what it's like to be a, a camper and what you offer for the kids, but those campers, I mean, those counselors like yourself who wanted to go home, but saw it through, like you were a different person. And if you allow yourself and open yourself up to all of these new experiences and just uh, interactions with children and, and it, you will, it will change your life, change your life. So I, I, yeah, and I, love I always tell people it's, it's, you know, there's sometimes you get able to look back on your life and realize when things change or you took a different path or whatever. And sometimes you don't know that. And I, I guess I'm lucky enough or fortunate enough to know that like deciding to work here, 1000% altered every part of my life and its direction and, and what I'm doing now and everything. And just by, you know, coming out here. So it's, it's you know, me too. When I got I started working at my camp, right? Like oh. it really, it, it is definitely life changing. So um, please tell me as you continue to change lives, I know you guys have a nonprofit. Tell me about your nonprofit. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to. So, um, we have a nonprofit called the Harold Robinson foundation. So, um, it's named after our, one of our owners, Jeff, uh, it was named after his father who was instrumental in helping us secure the land uh, at camp and, and everything. And so it's named after him. And, um, you know, after a few years, a couple of years, we always knew we wanted to do something to give back. Um, and then what we ended up doing is we, um, we bring the majority of kids in Watts. Uh, we work with South Central Compton, you know, a lot of kind of underserved areas of Los Angeles. We've really found our mission is, is in the city of Watts. Um, and so we, bring, have, we have brought up, um, we've been operating it for Oh, almost 15 years, I believe now at this point. Um, and we brought up almost, we brought up every single elementary school in Watts to camp during the year for free. And then we started the first ever absolute free day camp in Watts every summer. And so we, you know, we've raised millions of dollars to doing it. We did, we do different, found, we work with different foundations, different nonprofits, um, you know, that we're able to, you know, to work with and one, you know, one, one nonprofit that, you know, we've really become partners with, which has been kind of unique. And one of our, one of my favorite things is um, we work with a, a group called ARC, which is the Anti-Recidivism Coalition. And it works with men and women who just um, are recently out of prison and it helps them with jobs and housing and everything. And so part, so a handful of our counselors each weekend are formerly incarcerated men and women, and we give them their first job out of, and so, so they are counselors with us, um, you know, because we always tell people, you know, we can bring kids, uh, kids from Watts or, you know, whatever, and, and we can provide them with an amazing weekend and, you know, life-changing, and we can bond with them on certain levels, but there's certain things and there's certain life experiences that I may have never had um, and so really partnering with that organization has really, you know, unlocked a lot of doors, um, and just been really great on both ends. I mean, it's, we're giving people, you know, that historically have a very hard time finding work. Um, and we, you know, give them their first job and some have worked with us for a long time and, and it's been, it's been really great. So second chances, I always say camp is the place for second chances and um yeah amazing 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 very, nick very well cool. before we get too more heavy we do play yeah. games at camp so before i let you go yeah of course to continue your day in california yeah yeah um i am going to invite you to play one of my favorite games which is called the seven second challenge are you familiar i'm not i'm not uh, familiar. okay so i will give you a number of probably two to three challenges and seven seconds to complete them. Are you ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. All right, all right. You had seven seconds to come up with a new word and define it. 
a new word. Um, post Liddy. Oh, all right. Please, yeah. what is post Liddy? Uh, post Liddy is um, it's when you uh, it's when you it's the act of posting on social media, um, but you're really hype while doing it, and so you're just really post Liddy. Okay, so were you post Liddy after you posted that one take music video to your <laughs> Facebook page? It, it was. That was a uh, that was a very uh, that was a dream of mine for a long time. I had in my head um, of always doing something in one take involving everyone, and um, I have to give props to my my great friend Ranald who uh, runs a company called Feel Good Films. Um, and they actually specialize in working with a lot of video product and production and with camps and youth and all around. Um, and we, we, he's been responsible for all of our videos, our video content and, and really kind of taking a lot of cinema, cinematic qualities and documentaries and stuff. And so one year he came out for a few weeks to film. He was a counselor at first. Um, and then just told me one day, he's like, Hey, I'd like to film things. And I was like, sure, let's do something. And he did one thing his summer. And I'm like, this is better than anyone I've ever paid. Like, <laughs> who are you? And then, so we've just continued to work with him and fly him out from, he's from over in the UK. And, uh, yeah, one year he was coming out for four weeks just to do a bunch of film and content. And, and we were up one night and I said, look, I've had this idea of shooting a music video in one take. And then pretty much he just, at that point, he said, let's do it. <laughs> I don't care what it is. And, and it, uh, yeah, it involved teaching someone how to catch a drone out of the air to then, you know. It is so good. Listeners, if you are watching or listening at any time, you must go to the Canyon Creek Summer Camp Facebook page and watch their one take music video. It was the first piece of video content that I saw from your camp. It was in your email signature. So I was like, oh, let's yeah. just start some research. Click, there it was. And it was breathtaking, blew my mind, yeah. blew my mind. So one last thing, we are at, um, at my camp here creating a dictionary of camp lingo. So Nick, give me a word or a phrase or a set of directions that only a creaker would be able to understand. Man, that's tough. Um, well, I mean, creaker in general is kind of an interesting, you know, what we call our campers and ourselves. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not quite, I'm, I was so I'm um, so flustered with the with the creating a word that now I'm trying to, my mind is is blank of, of words that have already been created. Well, you know what? You did such a great job with your original post Liddy word, and it led into the perfect conversation to to give a shout out about your one take music video. So I'm going to let you off the hook. Thank with you. The camp lingo on this one. I, the that? only word I could think of was prank, which really it's so being up at camp. There's obviously a lot of animals, a lot of different things. And we always make the joke that, you know, sure, we have California black bears that don't really come down, you know, come down for at the trash at late at night or, you know, there's just different things at camp, you know, nothing really too crazy or to be scared of. But we always make the joke that the raccoons are really who run the place. Oh, yeah. Tons of them. And so we've named all of them Frank. It's a raccoon. There you go. Every raccoon at camp is named Frank. Frank. And we blame Love him it. for a lot of things. Even if Love he's not, it. if even he's not to be blamed for, you could just you, Frank you did blame, it. You blame Frank. Frank. Frank did it. did it. All right, I like that. You gotta have a scapegoat. Exactly. Nick, I cannot thank you enough for joining me today in my HC. So, like my word, this is this is the HC, right? The head counselor yeah. cabin. So oh, your okay. camp. So this it's is HC. It's funny. So we're in my office, which is called the HQ. So I guess that would be a, a lingo. Yeah. So we call, uh, yeah, we call it HQ um, because yeah, this is kind of where, um, you know, where it all, where it all happens. Yeah. So the, I'm in the girls HC. So there's a lot of magic that happens here yeah, um, yeah. all summer long, all summer long, but you gotta, if you know, you know, right. hundred percent. So 
Thank you so much, guys. If you want to learn more about Camp Canyon Creek Summer Camp in Southern California, check out their website. Again, check out their Facebook page and that incredible one take music video. It will blow your mind. It is so yeah. good. I'll send you. Um, I'll send you a link. Maybe you can link it in the description notes. Okay, so that would be perfect. Yeah. And if you love camp the way Nick and I love camp, and you want to learn hear more about camps across the country and the amazing things they're doing to empower our youth. You can see more of my camp here on YouTube or listen to it um, where you find your podcasts. So thanks for joining us, Nick. Um, I'll see you guys later around the campfire. I'll save a s'more for you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Take a moment to shine.